Okay, so this is a thermal experiment which we would normally get you to do yourselves, which is to test um, how the heat is retained. And we have, just have a can. We have a can with a lid. And we have a can that I've very inexpertly wrapped in bubble wrap. My Christmas present wrapping skills are absolutely abysmal. And a lid. So A is just a can. You might recognize them as sweet corn can if they're painted black. B, can with lid, C, can, lid, and a little bit of bubble wrap as insulation. So we're gonna, I'm going to fill those with hot water, got a kettle boiling there, and then I'm going to measure what happens to the temperature over time. Okay, so I'm expecting you to treat this as if you were doing the practical yourself. So you've got to give some consideration to safety. What safety things have I got to consider? Maybe have a look at the way I've set the kit up and think about why have I set the kit up that way? What am I worried about? And then you've got to think about what are my variables? Well, this is a slightly interesting one in that this is actually three separate experiments, A, B, and C. Three separate experiments where for each one, my independent variable is going to be time and my dependent variable is going to be temperature. So they aren't actually the same experiment. I say three separate experiments with each one having an independent uh, dependent I'll start that again, an independent variable of time and a dependent variable of temperature. Now, how long am I going to do it for? I'm going to aim for 20 minutes and I'm going to take a reading uh, every two minutes. And therefore, you're going to need a table with uh, 10 slots in it running up to 20 minutes um, uh, with time and temperature. So you need, please, to get that table produced now. Pause the video so you can. So my kettle is just boiled. I'm going to try and pour the same amount of water into each can. And then let's get the lid on. Wrap up a bit more. I'm in charge of this not wrapping. Okay, so we are about ready to go. So don't forget, you've got to write down the values each time I shout them out. So I hope you're ready to go at time equals zero. I'm going to call time equals zero now. So A is reading 94, B is reading 94, and C is reading 94. Obviously, I'm going to do this real time. You've got the video in front of you, so you can skip ahead to the next two minute reading. Make sure that lid's on tight. Don't want too much escaping around the edges. In fact, I might just weigh it down.
Okay, coming up to the first two minute reading. A has dropped to 85. B has dropped to 89. And C is on 90. Right, I'm going to pause the video now so you don't have to watch every single second of this. So if you are skipping ahead, don't skip too far. Okay, starting to approach four minutes. A has dropped down to 79. B is on 84. And C is on 87. Aren't you glad you're not having to do this for real? It's not a very interesting experiment. Okay, approaching six minutes. A has dropped down to 73. B has dropped down to 81. And C is on 85. Right, coming up to eight minutes. A is on 69. B is on 78. And C is on 82. Okay, approaching 10 minutes. A is on 65. B is on 75. And C is on 80 degrees centigrade. So we're approaching 12 minutes. A is on 62. B is on 73. And C is on 78. Degrees centigrade. Okay, coming up to 14 minutes. A is on 59. B is on 70. And C is on 76. Degrees C. Right, 16 minutes. A has gone down to 56. B has gone down to 68. 
and C has gone down to 74. Okay, coming up to 18 minutes. A is at 54. B is at 66. And C is at 72. Now we're coming up on 20 minutes, which is the last one I'm going to ask you to measure and plot a graph for. But I will leave it running all the way down to 40 minutes. We just won't take measurements. We'll come back and have a look at it at 40 minutes just to see what a final value looks like for this. So you might want to add to your graph a 40 minute time interval after the 20 minute one that we're going to do any second now. So A has dropped to 52, B is on 63, and C is on 71. Okay, so we're coming up on the 40 minute mark now. And then once we've recorded that number, we'll be done. So the things you've got to think about, how effective in keeping the heat in is just adding a lid. Well, what about adding a lid and insulation? compared to an open can what did i have to do for safety and um, why have i put rubber patterns under the bases of each one I don't know if you can see those rubber pads under the bases of each one why have i done that um, but essentially what difference does that in a lid make what difference does that in a lid and insulation make and of course you could also be asking yourself and one thing put in your conclusion what other experiment could I have run at the same time that would have perhaps given us more information than these three alone? So what else could I have added to this experiment uh, to make it, uh, to give us a bit more info? Right, coming up on four minutes, and A has dropped to 38. B is on 49, and C is on 58. So you don't have to plot that one but uh, that's just there for you to draw up an extra bit of information for your conclusion. Good luck, I look forward to reading what you have to say.